welcome to Walt Disney World Clicks. Now, I'm Kevin, your host, and this is a show that tries to show you some of the updates happening around the Walt Disney World Resort in the past week. We don't try to be comprehensive. In fact, you're going to go where I go, basically, within the past week. And so there will be times that we miss things and times that we focus on minutiae and details rather than on the big things that have come out this past week. So bear with us as we'll get to it as soon as we can. Now this week we're going to start on the monorail looking out over the Polynesian Resort. This is the parking lot closest to the Transportation and Ticket Center, as you can see going under the knife, as is the sunset point out in the beach area there for the Polynesian DVC. Speaking of DVC, the Grand Floridian DVC looking like it's more and more finished every day. They've got some signs up now saying that only cast members are allowed past a certain point, so I guess it's close enough that some people can have a look. At the Cosmic Rays restaurant in Tomorrowland, the orange swirl drink has been joined by the Caramel Apple Slush, also for $3.99. They keep experimenting with specialty drinks in the Magic Kingdom. We are also going to bring you several photos of the Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster as it continues its rock work. This is the peephole nearest the uh, Storybook Circus side. And as you can see, the rocks are beginning to really cover up a lot of the track work. Uh, and a new feature has appeared here. I don't think there is any track up here. This little uh, mine feature must be purely cosmetic. Around the back side of the mountain, even more of the tracks here now covered up by some of the rocks. And then this feature here has come in since I was last here on this roof line. Uh, some dolphins supporting the roof line and then uh, this uh, squid back here. So that roof line has been there, but it hasn't always had the decorative touches. Swinging around the mountain, we are here near the uh, Gaston area. And you can see that's just rocks really from this angle that you can see not much in the way of tracks anymore at all. The other people from the... Uh, other side, I guess kind of closer to the carousel side, is now being blocked by this tool shed in the front here. I'm not sure why they're doing that exactly, uh, but as you can see, they've got even more of the rock work going into the last part of the mountain that was previously kind of still open air, but now it's finally getting its covered up rock work there. This is a brand new Lumiere figurine, and it's high end. As you can see, it costs $50, and that's without the glass or the case below it. Uh, but it is highly detailed, and it does light up, and I know a couple of friends have been very excited to get their hands on one. The Princess Fairy Tale Hall has these signs out front. I don't think I noticed them the last time I was there that tell you which two characters are inside. Rapunzel and Snow White on this side and Cinderella and Aurora on this side. Now those in fact can change, so this is an operational thing. Now looking at a distance from the Pinocchio Village House, you see the large construction wall they've got set up there while they do some work to the front of the Pinocchio Village House. They are still open for business. The entrance is around the side here next to the restrooms. This construction wall is also home to an ODV card, outdoor vending, and they've only got a few uh, possible items for sale. I'm not sure why they have such a limited menu there right now. And then this sign from Mickey's Philhar Magic struck me as a little bit unusual. Instead of saying 20 minutes, as it usually does, it says pound sign too. And it probably was a glitch of some sort, but it caught my eye that there was even a pound sign in the system. Peter Pan's flight is under refurbishment, getting some signage painted here. And in fact, it's um, fast pass machines are not just closed, some of them have been co-opted for the Princess Fairy Tale Hall. There's what the construction walls look like at Peter Pan's flight. And the construction wall includes this logo here where you can read that it's currently going to, uh, it's currently being reworked and uh, will launch again soon. I don't think anything is being changed of substance so much as being cleaned annually. This is a change, however. Near the Columbia Harbor House is this back part of the queue, and as you can see, they've added something new there, taking a closer look. It's a mural, obviously based on the Never Never Land Island from the movie. And many of the same touches we see in both the movie and in the ride are present here in the mural as well. The Jungle Cruise has had a refurbishment recently, back up now. Let me just uh, illustrate some of the things that are changed by zooming in on this box that says Ammo 717, short for July 17th. That's Disneyland's birthday, and it's opening date. Uh, this box isn't new, but it used to be out here. So obviously what they've done is they've moved props around in addition to painting them and so on. Now they did paint and uh, refurbish as many of the animals as, it looks like they did it for all of them really. Everything is looking sparkling brand new. They've cut back a lot of the foliage as well, so the ride looks very refreshed I would have to say. They've even uh, bothered to go paint the, um, the, the boats. Now they still look rustic, they've just been painted, so they're brand new rustic. The Tiki Room has had a rolling refurbishment recently in the form of these little uh, netting fences, I guess. And there's a couple of them scattered throughout the Tiki Room. They are there next to the benches so that there are places for people to park their uh, wheelchairs and ECVs. And th that way they're not blocking the main aisleways. 
The Tiki Room is, however, looking a little bit rougher for wear. On the day we visited, the central drummer was missing here from this side, and over to the next side there was a central drummer all right, but he only had one arm. Now this past week was the premiere of Glow with the Show. Now this first started at Fantasmic in DHS, <clears throat> and then this past weekend came to Wishes in the Magic Kingdom as well. Now these $25 ears do glow, not only randomly, but in sync with the show. Now, but just before the show, a little observation here that the Wishes viewing area has for FastPass Plus has moved next to the Rose Garden. I think it was over in the front um, of the castle previously. Now here's what it looks like when the ears are all glowing in sync with the castle in the background doing a castle projection show. Uh, in this case, they're all the same color, but they don't always stay the same color for things like the projections or for the fireworks. Sometimes they all turn different colors, which gives it a splash of color to the, uh, the sea of faces around you, the environment around you, and sometimes it matches what you're seeing on the main action on the castle or in the fireworks behind. So it really adds a, a different layer of interactivity to the experience um, and makes it fun. On our way out of the Magic Kingdom, we stopped at the Town Square Theater to see what happened now that the uh, princesses have gone. Now, this side was previously home to the princesses. As you can see, the banner now is related to meeting Mickey. And the area in the back of the room here where the princesses had their meet and greet hallway is now just boarded up. They do still have signs up at the top, one for Fast Pass and one for Standby. We have switched parks here to Hollywood Studios, where I'm taking a picture of Backlot Express to show you the switchbacks that they're using now increasingly at many of the fast food places at Disney World. This is more like a bank teller system, like you would see um, elsewhere in the, it's in the outside world, uh, and that's a lot more fair to everyone so that you don't get stuck behind the one cashier who's moving slowly or has a slow guest. Uh, now it's a little bit more equitable, and your weight will hopefully be uh, a lot less. While we're here, let's grab a picture of the carrot cake cupcake, uh, which was highly sweet and tasted a little pumpkin spice, actually, uh, for sale at the Backlot Express. Great movie ride, experimenting with the Party of Two sign here, clearly meant to pull you down to the front and get you seated faster. Uh, it's a little bit like a singles line, except now it's a Party of Two, so they really want to fill every seat on the Great Movie Ride. This being the Studios Park, they do change their signage every time there are new movies, so I haven't been here in a little while, and there's the Monsters University sign and the Frozen sign. I'm going to show you a picture in a moment of this area here behind the construction wall. The Pixar Place sign, I don't know if this was always here, if the Luxo was always there. I run across photos sometimes that I'm not sure if these are new or if it's, I just have never paid attention to them, so I call these things new to me. And so this Luxo character here is new to me. The Osborne family dancing spectacle of lights or whatever it's actually called, is uh, obviously under construction here in the big city area and uh, will be returning uh, shortly after Thanksgiving, uh, sorry, excuse me, shortly after Halloween, uh, and um, will uh, presumably, and this is a rumor, uh, be in its final year of operation here at the Hollywood Studios. Uh, this has not been announced by Disney, but I'm hearing whispers to that effect. Herbie's, Herbie's Drive-In in the same courtyard area has got a new menu, and something I've not seen here before is another spot holding the bread cones, uh, which you can also find at Min and Bill's Dockside Diner, where they have things like uh, marinara and uh, sausage, or a shrimp salad one, and this one containing uh, chili cheese. Back to the Osborne Lights, the nativity scene obviously going in this corner of the area this time around, next to San Francisco Street. And one more Monsters University sign back up against Pixar Place. Now we're here at DHS primarily to have a look at something new. They are still adding things to the Star Tours line. So this is the robot voiced by Patrick Warburton. You know him as the flight attendant in the preview video for Soren. In fact, this robot says things like, nice work, pal, sometimes, the people in the line. And the screens behind this robot are brand new. They've been added sometime recently, and they, as you can see, they are scanning the aliens as they come by, identifying them by race, and saying, you know, what kind of uh, uh, kind of crime they've committed. In this case, uh, flying through the labyrinths of Naboo. Now, you see, this is a, a Greedo type character, and we'll see that Greedo character again in a moment, but with a different crime. So, uh, what they're doing is changing these alerts or the crimes that they're committing. Uh, there's the Greedo character again, um, but not necessarily changing the imagery behind it. But it's a nice touch, and I'm glad they're still plussing the ride. And there's another one. Uh, this one wanted for ruggling, uh, running a smuggling operation. Now, this past weekend was the Food and Wine Classic. If you're not familiar with this, it is a, uh, an event that happens at the Swan and Dolphin Hotel. It's a single weekend, 
and it runs during the Epcot Food and Wine Festival, which is multiple weekends. Uh, and this one takes place just between the hotels, the Swan and Dolphin, on this causeway, they call it. What they do is they set up a number of booths on, on the arms of the causeway as well, not just the main one, uh, where you can meet celebrity chef, uh, Todd English, for instance, and otherwise sample a whole bunch of wines and food. And there's a whole lot more wine than there is food in an event like this. Now, the food can be expensive. If you're buying tickets, first of all, you have to spend a minimum of $50. And these, the way the tickets work out, these five tickets would have cost you $10 to get this little sample of carved prime rib, which, as you can tell by the hand, is not all that large. You're probably better off getting the $80 wristband so you can have all you can uh, eat as well as all you can drink. You can keep coming back as many times as you want. They do have a lot more tables this year. I was at this event previously, and they've uh, listened to their customers and added more tables places to sit because it does get crowded as you can see and the lines really do form for the food more than anything else uh, and here you can see some of the food options being prepared and what the level of crowds look like at the event itself they also provide live music over on the dolphin side that they pipe around the entire area have a look at some of the food as you can see it comes served on plastic ware uh, many of the food items are uh, very tasty although they are small you'll have to go back multiple times if you want to kind of fill up on the food items I would say don't miss out on, the, the tacos were good too, but don't miss out on the desserts. This one in particular, which is warm bread with, of course, cold uh, vanilla ice cream and then a hazelnut spread. Just the absolute hit of the festival for me. Uh, couldn't get enough of that stuff. Now, we're doing something different on this show. You've probably seen other places before which ask you, where in Walt Disney World is this? And then show you a picture and make a guess. Well, we're showing you pictures of things that aren't there anymore. So you have to guess based on memory or perhaps your own photos. So without any further ado, let me show you the picture this week asking you where in Walt Disney World was this? Now I'm not going to give you a lot of hints, obviously. Uh, it's up to you to uh, come up with your own guesses. I will say that I will give you the answers in the following week's video. So we will obviously show you this, this picture again and then give you the answer by next week. In the meantime, uh, you're meant to guess in the comments section of the YouTube video. Go ahead and input your guess there, and uh, we'll see if you're right. We thank you for checking out the new show, and we hope you'll be back, and we'll see you next week.